I have had a lot of people ask me for a Thorns build, and when I picture a Thorns build, I picture this unkillable machine that can clear everything in the game while completely AFK. So to demonstrate that, I'm playing right now. We're just gonna walk in here, and I'm just gonna take my hands off the keyboard, okay? And you'll see that this build will just clear the room, and it's not going to die. This build is completely unkillable. It actually does pretty decent damage even while AFK. Keep in mind, the damage is a lot higher if you're actually pushing your buttons, but I can just stand here and do nothing. And look at this, like it's actually clearing the room at a pretty steady pace. And if you watch my health, my health like isn't moving. This build is so funny to me. Like I, it actually makes me mad that the build is as good as it is because Thorn should be a total meme. Okay, so how is this build actually working? So it is using Thorns to kill weaker mobs to get corpses, and then the Sacrilegious Soul is auto-casting Blighted Corpse Explosions to kill everything else. So this build is utilizing uh, completely AFK passive damage, along with a ton of survivability in order to perform in this way. So this next clip you're gonna see, because I bet your first question is, can this build kill Duriel? And you can see in these next clips, yes, this build absolutely can kill Duriel, and it's just gonna take you a while to do it completely AFK. If you're actively playing the game, it'll be a lot faster, of course. And then I also did a four-man carry completely AFK, and it was about a 15-minute kill. And the thing is, I could make the build able to kill the boss faster while AFK, but the point is to be an absolute unkillable god. It is impossible to die with this build if you're actually playing. Sometimes if you AFK, it'll maybe die if things go really wrong, but it pretty much always will live even AFK, and if you're actively playing, you will literally never die. So let's get into the build and start talking about how it works, and let's get into all the gear and all the stupidity that I figured out. This build is stupid. I, I just, it makes me mad, but let's get into it. The footage you're seeing on the screen now is what the build looks like when you're actually pressing your buttons, and you can see it actually clears fairly quickly. Something to keep in mind though is that this build is way tankier than it needs to be. I mean like absurdly tanky compared to what is necessary to do Nightmare 100. If you wanted to, you could make this build do a lot more damage, but that's not the point. Alright, let's get into the gear and start talking about it. So for starters, I am running two Ubrini, so I'm running the Harlequin Crest for the increased corpse explosion damage as well as the 20% damage reduction, along with the Melted Heart of Sea League. But the thing is, these are totally unnecessary. This is just kind of what you need to be able to play at AFK. The Harlequin, you can easily replace with an Aspect of Might, and the Melted Heart of Sea League, you can easily replace uh, with a Damage Aspect. I would suggest that you run Aspect of the Damned for a 75% damage multiplied your corpse explosion. That makes way more sense than a Sea League. Like I said, I'm just running this for the meme. On my chest, of course you have to run Razor Plate because it's a Thorns build, right? But one thing you will notice is that I am running rubies instead of thorns gems. The reason for this is because the extra survivability from rubies, even though it's totally unnecessary, is way more than the amount of thorns that you get and the amount of damage you get from the thorns. I much prefer to run rubies, especially if you're gonna drop some of this unnecessary tankiness for more damage. So, on our gloves we're running needle flare, which will cause our thorns to have a 40% chance to do its damage in an AoE. And you can see whenever we pull like a big pack of small mobs, our thorns obliterates them. And that's largely because of needle flare. And remember, the whole idea here is that our thorns will kill all the squishy mobs. And then we're going to auto cast corpse explosions with the ring of sacrilege uh, in order to kill the stronger mobs. That's the whole game plan that we're going for. On our pants, I'm running the juggernauts aspect and this is just going to get us to armor cap. You could technically run Disobedience. I just prefer Juggernaut uh, for the consistency. On our boots, I have Wind Strikers on right now, but I don't think this is Biss. On your boots, what you really want to be running is the uh, movement speed after not taking damage for two seconds aspect. That's gonna be a lot better. You could potentially run Flicker Step as well. Uh, when we get into talking about the ultimate, it'll make more sense why, but your aspect on boots isn't a huge deal, but anyway. For our weapon, we're running Black River. I would say that this is borderline required if you want to actually be able to do damage because after you kill all those small mobs, the Black River's corpse explosions are what's actually gonna kill the elites and stuff. So I would say Black River is a very important piece of this build and it's going to massively increase our damage. Uh, on this ring, we're gonna be running the Blighted Aspect for a 120% damage multiplier. And remember that um, 
this is going to be getting proc from our corpse explosions, we're actually going to end up getting pretty decent uptime on it. So I, I'm a big fan of this aspect. And then we're going to be running the Sacrilegious Soul, of course, for the autocast of corpse explosions and the corpse tendrils for grouping mobs. And then this is another really weird one. Um, and this is arguably completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. I'm just running the Crowded Sage for the increased healing. And you can see for each nearby enemy, you get healing up to a cap of, on this one, uh, 460. And <laughs> it's so unnecessary. It's so overkill. But I do think you need this to play the completely AFK version. And yeah, I, I can't believe I'm actually playing a build with Crowded Sage. It's so wild to me. So for our gems, we're running diamonds and all of our jewelry um, for the um, increased resistance to all elements. And then on our weapon, we're going to be running a purple for damage over time. So you can see how this build is so tanky, largely from our gear. And when we get into everything else, it's going to become more and more evident why this build is as tanky as it is. So our skill tree is pretty interesting. Uh, there's some stuff that's very standard and some stuff that's very not standard. And I think the stuff that's not standard is extremely interesting. So kind of skimming over the standard stuff, we're running Reap, Acolytes Reap, guaranteed corpse generation, damage reduction, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Huge flush, again, corpse generation, pretty normal. Then we're running three points into spiked armor. So this is 2300 armor, which is quite a bit. It's about 10% of our overall, overall armor pool. So it's definitely worth the three points. We're putting five points into Corpse Explosion and going all the way to Blighted Corpse Explosion for the damage. Remember, this is going to be the main thing that lets us kill elites. And then we're putting one point into Grim Harvest and three points into Field by Death for the damage multiplier. Three points into Death's Embrace because we need that tankiness. It's so important. <laughs> totally unnecessary, but it's also a damage multiplier. Uh, amplify damage, three points for the 12%. And then this is the first super weird thing, or second super weird thing, which is five points in Iron Maiden. Now, I think you could make arguments to not do this, but personally, I actually don't mind it. It The problem with Decrepify, right, is that Decrepify slows enemies. And um, a lot of the reason why we apply the curse is actually to get a buff from Paragon Board and from Amplify Damage. And the thing that I really like about Iron Maiden in this build is that it doesn't slow them so they can keep up and they can hit us. And that's going to, you know, and they're going to kill themselves between the Iron Maiden and the Thorns. So it actually ends up fitting decently well into this build. I don't think it's that meme -y, as as meme -y as it might first seem. I actually think Iron Maiden is pretty decent. We're also going to get a 30% damage multiplier on it. And the other thing is, is that if you're running the Aspect of the Damned, now you have both curses and then your, your uh, corpse explosions are going to do 50% more damage. So you can see that this build is actually fairly coherent. It's not as meme as it first appears. Then we're going to be running Decrepify. Obviously, Decrepify is crazy for the damage reduction and everything else. And then we're going to get massive cooldown reduction on some of our abilities from Abhorrent Decrepify. We're running Corpse Tendrils with Plagued Corpse Tendrils to apply Vulnerable. We're running uh, Reaper's Pursuit, Gloom, and Terror for damage multipliers on our Corpse Explosion. Then we're running three points to stand alone. Three points in Momentum Mori, you know, damage reduction, increased uh, damage, all, all the stuff that we want. So this is the next interesting piece, which is Army of the Dead, which at first might seem extremely odd, especially when I have a point there, which is totally unnecessary. Um, I'm going to have a link to the full skill tree in the description below. This point, I mean, <laughs> does it even matter? You can spend this point on whatever you want. Probably Grim Harvest for the Essence Generation for his Sea League. But anyway... We're going to be running Army of the Dead. The reason for this is because the Army of the Dead is going to generate a ton of corpses. I mean a ton of corpses. Like 20 to 30 over 7 seconds. Something like that. And this build can really struggle in single target. Like really struggle in single target. And if there's like an isolated elite or two and the elites are kind of like running around. You know it's those elusive mobs that aren't quite behaving the way you want them to. Army of the Dead is actually going to give you a ton of damage against those mobs. And with the amount of Abhorrent Decrepify procs that we're getting, the cooldown on Army of the Dead is fairly low. So you don't want to use Army of the Dead in big pulls, you actually want to use Army of the Dead in small pulls so that you can get the extra damage that you need to actually kill stuff. Finally, we're going to be running Shadow Blight. This is to proc the Blighted Aspect. The damage from this is meh, it's not really that big of a deal, it's mostly just to proc the Blighted Aspect. So next we're going to talk about the Book of the Dead, and then the Paragon Board, as well as the Construct. And finally at the end we're going to talk about a few tips and tricks, and some things that you can do to make the build really work. Besides just AFK and kill everything. 
So for our warriors, we're going to be running reapers for 15% multiplier on our shadow damage. On our mages, we're going to be doing cold sacrifice for 15% against vulnerable. And then for our golem, we're going to be sacrificing the blood golem, mostly because the other options aren't that good. And the blood golem is going to give us 10% health. And what this build really needs is more survivability. You can see sometimes my HP actually dips below 95%. So I really like having this extra 10% health just so I can feel a little bit safer. I hate this build. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay. On our Paragon board, we're going to be running Amplify for the 10% damage increase. We're going to be running Flesh Eater for 40%. And remember, with Black River, we're getting really good uptime on this 40%. So this actually ends up being a very important piece of the build. We're running Sacrificial for another 10% damage. Coming up here, we're running Blood Begets Blood for 15% whenever we pick up Blood Orbs. We're running Exhumation for a massive additive damage to Corpse Explosion, as well as a uh, massive Fortify Generation. And again, Black River, right? It's consuming five corpses at a time. So the Fortify Generation from this is actually huge. Coming over here, we're going to be running Scent of Death. It's either going to be 15% damage reduction or 15% damage. Usually because of Black River, it's going to be 15% damage because it's going to be eating all of the corpses. We're also going to be running Territorial because we really need 10% damage reduction. It's so important. We're going to be running Wither for a massive damage increase on the Corpse Explosion. And then finally, we are running Darkness so that we can reduce enemy's damage by an additional 10%, which again, is totally necessary. This is needed. The build cannot work without this. So yeah, you can see this build is, it's stupid how tanky this build gets. So let's talk about the construct. We're going to be running the standard Genesis Duration Support Tactical Support Flash of Adrenaline for a 50% damage multiplier. And then we're going to be running Tempest with Resource Support. This is for the Melted Heart. If you're wanting to play this build for some godforsaken reason and you don't have Melted Heart, you can swap this for Safeguard, or I'm sorry, uh, Fortify Support for extra uptime on your Fortify, and it'll still work extremely well. And then we're going to be playing Evernight for plus four to all skills for, you know, the increased corpse explosion damage. And then we're going to be running safeguard for 15% damage reduction. Now, obviously this build is a total meme and you should never play it. But if for some godforsaken reason you decide to play this build, here's a couple of tips to really help the build work. So the first thing is that you always want to make sure enemies are cursed, at least with Iron Maiden. You could also use Decrepify, but the problem with Decrepify is it's going to slow them. So Iron Maiden is preferred until enemies really stack up on top of you. The second tip is to make sure that you're spamming Army of the Dead in single target and whenever there's just a low amount of enemies. Remember the corpse generation is absolutely vital to being able to kill isolated elites as well as bosses. The final tip is that against bosses, especially if you want to AFK, but honestly even if you're playing, you should replace Decrepify with golem, specifically the bone golem with the corpse generation whenever it takes damage. It's going to generate a ton of corpses and it's actually going to increase your uh, kill speed like quite a bit against bosses. So that's all I got for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this meme of a build and I'm shocked at how good it is. It's really good for farming vaults. I've had a blast playing it and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, you know, let me know down below how you felt about it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.